Well, obviously, this guy chose not to come back, and it's as simple as cutting the bracelet off, leaving his phone there so he can't be tracked that way either, and, and he's gone. A Fayette County jury found John Buckley guilty of rape, sodomy, assault, and unlawful imprisonment, but he wasn't there to hear the verdict. This video we got from the Fayette County Sheriff's Office shows the last time Buckley was inside the building while the jury was deliberating. Since he was out of jail on bond, he was free to come and go during breaks, but after he left this time, police say he never returned. A person who's been accused of a very serious crime, they're setting through a trial, they're watching the evidence, they're getting a feel that they're going to be found guilty. Uh, why would they come back? Well, jail officials say after Buckley left the courthouse, he came here to his house on Denburn Court, and it was near here where they say they found the ankle bracelet. Now Buckley is on the run, but police say he's got the skills for this kind of situation. He's an Army veteran, a ranger who was among the first soldiers into Afghanistan in the weeks after 9-11. Because of his extensive combat training, police aren't taking any chances, even putting some attorneys and officers under protection. It's not often that police have to try to protect their own, but that's going on right here because they got to get this guy in custody. It's dangerous for the police officers that are trying to catch him, and it's dangerous uh, for people out there that this guy's going to come in contact with. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT 27 News First. I just don't understand it. Her day of vindication lasted only a few moments. Her ex-boyfriend, an Army veteran, had just been convicted of raping and sodomizing her. After we had the guilty verdict, you know, and I'm supposed to be able to feel vindicated that they finally put the man who raped me in prison, um, but they can't find him. The reason for the delay, it appears that the defendant, Mr. Buckley, has voluntarily chosen not to return to court. He had walked out of the Fayette County Circuit Courtroom before the verdict was read. His ankle monitor was found cut off on a street. I can't get on with my life. I can't. Now, she's under 24-hour protection, being moved from place to place while he is loose. But it just made me feel like, like I was the one in prison. When I shouldn't be the one in prison, he should be. We can't tell you where she did this interview with WKYT's Officer Don. John Buckley IV is considered that dangerous and a threat to her. Um, I would have a pistol in my glove compartment. Even when they dated in Lexington, she says he was armed. Detectives right now don't even want me to go back to my house. I can't even go home because they're scared that he will try and kill me. She says she met Buckley at a Halloween party, dated him for one and a half years, never suspecting their relationship would end in a real-life nightmare of horror. I was in complete terror for my life, and I was just doing whatever he wanted me to do so I could get out of there with, it, with my life. It was May 29th, two years ago. She was here, inside John Buckley's apartment on East 4th Street in Lexington. She says until that day in May, he had never shown any violence towards her. The look on his face and the anger in his voice told me that, you know, he would hurt me if I didn't do what he said. Buckley, 29, had served numerous tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. The decorated Army veteran was upset with her because when they broke up, she dated one of his friends. She went to his apartment to talk out the problem. She says once inside his apartment here in Lexington, he picked up a video camera to record the sexual assault. She says it lasted about 40 minutes. It was, it was completely terrible, um, and he was doing it to punish me. And he opened the door, and we went inside. Um, she says he never expected her to go to police. I think he thought I would be too scared of him um, to go to the police and tell them what he did to me. But you did? Yes. I called him as soon as I got home. Buckley was arrested the next day. When he went to trial last week in Fayette Circuit Court, she testified, determined to see him put in prison. It was, it was never angry um, like it was in the, the video where he was raping me. I know that he would go out and do this to somebody else. That's just the kind of person he is. Um, and I couldn't stand by and let him get away with doing it to me. I'll read the verdict of the jury as to count one. The verdict was guilty of rape and sodomy. The sentence, 20 years. Now, she's the one who can't go home, can't work, can't have a normal life. She believes the judicial system has let her down and victimized her again. I don't feel like I can feel safe going back to my house until he is caught and put in prison. And I can't go back to my life. Um, that I should be able to live like a normal person. Um, because I did, I did everything that I was, that you know, I should have done to put my rapist in prison. I've got a pretty extreme high level of training. Um, On trial for rape, 
John Buckley told the court about his service as an army ranger deployed multiple times to Iraq and Afghanistan. Is it safe to say as a result of your training and experience in the military, your bodyguard forces, you know how to defend yourself? Yes. But just as the jury reached a verdict, the judge had an unusual announcement. I'll also advise you at this point, the reason for the delay, it appears that the defendant, Mr. Buckley, has voluntarily chosen not to return to court. Free on bond, Buckley simply walked out of the courthouse before the jury found him guilty. Investigators found Buckley's court-ordered electronic ankle monitor cut off and left in the street. Now catching him is only part of the challenge. Authorities fear he may want more than just to get away. The night this happened when I got pulled out from in front of a window and told that he was a trained sniper. Mary Houlihan is the director of victim services in the Fayette Commonwealth's attorney's office. Her first priority was securing Buckley's rape victim, who had just testified against him. Like we would talk sometimes. Predominantly, I was concerned with her protection and how to get her to a place where she would be safe. Um, but very quickly, I started realizing there's other people he wants. He's really, really mad at. He's made that clear the whole time as we've built up to trial. He blames the police. Uh, he blames individual detectives. Assistant Commonwealth's attorney Todd Bradbury was the lead prosecutor in the case. And now he's fled, and that scares the bejesus out of me. But he says he's more concerned for the police officers who investigated Buckley and any other officers the fugitive could encounter. And that could be in other jurisdictions too, you know, if he happens to get pulled over for a traffic offense in some other state, um, you know, potentially those officers would be at risk. My biggest fear, he is so self-righteous in his anger and vehemence about the whole world being against him and this sounding like a God complex kind of thing. My biggest fear is more that he just, he, he's too big to just go away quietly. Correction officers say ankle monitors like the one I'm wearing right now can track a person to within nine feet and up to once every minute. Officials with the Fayette County Detention Center say ankle monitors are an effective way to keep There's track of criminals and certain people standing through. trial who are out on bond. It allows us to actually track the exact location of the offender while they're in a community. They say since the ankle monitoring program started seven years ago, they've had between 1,600 and 1,700 people use them. One of those people is John Buckley, now a fugitive who police say cut off his ankle monitor as his rape trial came to an end. The reason for the delay, it appears that the defendant, Mr. Buckley, has voluntarily chosen not to return to court. There are safeguards in place against tampering with the monitor. The primary one is fiber optics that runs through the band, um, so in case the band is cut, then it will actually send an immediate alert to the on-call officer. Roughly about a minute a max on the, on the time frame that the alert is sent to the on-call officer. Okay. But some say those safeguards don't help once the monitor's been cut off. When someone cuts them off, uh, there's an alert that goes out, uh, but that's, that's about it. There's some that it's as simple as using a pair of industrial scissors to cut it off. It can be done, and it's, it's not a big deal and then you're left with an ankle bracelet and no idea where the person that you were trying to monitor is. And jail officials say there are about 50 monitors in use right now. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT 27 News First. Now to breaking news, we're tracking in Lexington where new information is just coming in about the hunt for a fugitive. This is a story that we've been staying on top of since it broke last month. Everyone is looking for John Buckley who took off just before a jury convicted him of rape. Sheriff's deputies just announced within the past hour there has been an arrest in the case. Let's go live now to WKYT's Gabriel Rojas at the courthouse. You've been on this case since the beginning. Gabriel, tell us about this latest development. Amber Sheriff Kathy Wint sent a powerful message to fugitive John Buckley today when she announced the arrest of his cellmate. A man investigators say helped Buckley jump bail. Earlier today, we deputies took into custody John Lee Williams, charging him with hindering prosecution and apprehension. Sheriff Witt urged Buckley to turn himself in, pointing out that Williams is cooperating with investigators now that he is in custody. Witt also began to give us a sense of Buckley's path after authorities say he cut off his electronic monitor and fled back on July 12th. 
We know Buckley made it as far as a Walgreens in Georgetown where he ditched a rental car stolen from his mother. The sheriff says both Buckley and John Lee Williams were in that car with a third person who was driving. Witt won't say who that person is, but she says her deputies have interviewed that third person. Where Buckley went from there is unclear. The sheriff would only say he went out of state. I spoke earlier today with the Lewis County Sheriff's Office in West Virginia. They confirmed that they have helped in the investigation, but so far they have not found any evidence that Buckley was in their jurisdiction. Finally today, Sheriff Wood announced that on Monday, the U.S. Marshal's Office issued a federal warrant for Buckley's arrest. The Marshal tells us that will expand the federal role in the search, and Witt says she welcomes the concerted effort. It is a shared role. We we all, um, none of us ever get caught up on, okay, who's in the lead and who's taking this other role. Um, we just sort of look at the event itself, and we all know our strengths and weaknesses, and everything, Gabriel, really just falls into place. The U.S. Marshal tells me they have, of course, been involved in the search from the beginning, but this new federal warrant will broaden their role both nationally and, if necessary, internationally. We're live in Lexington. Gabriel Rojas, WKYT. Gabriel, thank you. Now, as we said, we've been tracking this case for you since it happened. Here's a look at how it's developed thus far. Buckley took off from the courthouse July 12th. His victim talked only to WKYT's officer Don on the 19th and told us how she's in hiding. The next day, police found Buckley's rental car outside the Georgetown Walgreens. And just yesterday, we broke the story of a warrant now out for Buckley's mother. And of course, Gabriel just told us about the arrest of a man accused of helping Buckley flee the state will continue to stay on top of this story. We are learning some new information tonight about the search for a Lexington fugitive. Federal and local authorities have been on the hunt for John Buckley IV since July when he walked out of the courthouse in Fayette County just moments before a jury convicted him of rape. Gabriel Rojas has been tracking the search for Buckley since he disappeared. And tonight, Gabriel investigates newly obtained records that shed some new light on what Buckley's family is doing to find him. When John Buckley's uncle, Kelly Buckley, left the courtroom Monday after the judge ordered him to forfeit a $150,000 bond, he didn't want to talk to the media, but he had a lot to say in court records that describe what he considers his attempts to locate his nephew. In a letter to Sheriff Kathy Witt, Kelly Buckley claims he met with his nephew's former cellmate, John Lee Williams. Williams has since confessed to helping John Buckley jump bail. Williams declined our request for an interview, but jail records confirm Kelly Buckley did make a personal visit to Williams on September 1st. In his letter, Kelly Buckley describes a deal he was trying to make with Williams in which Williams would contact John Buckley through another person known only as Big Boy. Kelly Buckley said that he had been working uh, with uh, Kathy Witt to get the, to find this guy and that he's been cooperating all along. Uh, we disagreed with that. Prosecutors say representatives from the Sheriff's Department and other agencies were prepared to testify on Monday that Kelly Buckley was not cooperating with them. The fugitive's uncle claims he pressured Williams to make a deal in time for the bond hearing in exchange for $5,000. Sometimes people can create ghosts for you to chase when you've got real leads to follow. WKYT crime tracker officer Don Evans, a former homicide detective, says if what Kelly Buckley describes is true, it could have done more harm than good. We don't know if investigators had already talked to this person in the jail and whether or not this created chaos for him. You, you just don't know. So going to the person in the jail, trying to initiate this stuff on your own is generally going to cause problems for the investigation. Uh, then, then what happens is investigators often are trying to do cleanup. What's more, Kelly Buckley sent copies of the letters to the judge, specifically for the court file, which makes them open to the public. It could potentially give the person they're trying to catch, John Buckley, the, head up, the heads up. In Lexington, Gabriel Rojas, WKYT. We contacted both the Sheriff's Office and the U.S. Marshal's Office. Both declined to comment on the status of the search for John Buckley.